This video is brought to you by Sunken Isles. Sunken Isles is an adventure supplement and setting guide for a magical, tropical wonderland where spirits inhabit spells, volcanoes are people, and God is trying to kill everybody. With 21 unique locations, over 70 new creature stat blocks, 3 playable races, a timeline that sorta of looks like this, 2,500 backers, and a bag of chips, this Kickstarter is all that and, uh, more. And by more, I mean a buttload of stuff like minis and all the other things in this image. Oh, also, I wrote the dang thing, so if you like what I do, maybe grab yourself a copy this month. Or today. That'd be equally cool. Here's a video about crustaceans. Welcome to a video about one of the least humanoid races in 5e that you can play, and they're my fault. I'll just go ahead and guess that when you first laid your beautiful, vibrant eyes on this thing, you assumed it was the second phase of the final boss in a secret Borderlands dungeon. But it's actually one of two sub-races of the Decapodians, funny little decapod people who hide out in rocks, punching each other, and playing seven-layer chess. Let's jump all the way back to a weird history and set the stage. In the beginning, stuff happened. Then later, a stupid god flying around in space painted some islands with weird things in them and did a discus toss that slapped the ocean with a new setting. In this setting, there are seven forces that sort of control everything. And one of them, whose domain is time, is a normal lobster. A lobster who was so good at being a lobster and not getting shell infections that he became an 11 foot tall demigod that could control his own aging. And with the growth of a king, so did the kingdom of Chitoni grow around Old Shell. Yeah, him just kind of being there caused magic to affect local lobsters and also mantis shrimp to become Power Ranger characters. Chitoni is sort of a rock cluster full of holes that's infested with a small city of these guys, and it's currently the only place that they hang out. Alright, there's History 101, let's look at the actual things. This is the first and least aggressive subrace called the Ula Ula. I think. Hawaiian is really hard to pronounce when you don't understand diacritical marks. So I'll be saying that going forward, I apologize if I'm 100% wrong. But Ula Ula sort of means red in Hawaiian, and it's also an island in Pokemon and a type of taro. So naturally, since lobsters have red shells, the Ula Ula can be brown, blue, orange, or white. Cause I'm a fucking idiot. It's okay, this was a collaborative work, so I can throw shade at my writing team without naming anybody. These transformed lobster people enjoy games of wit, occasional travel, and general self-confidence. They're honestly pretty chill, even though they look like something that would hungrily break into a spaceship. The Ula Ula give a lot of freedom to players when determining age and size, since they can range from a standard gremlin height of 3 feet to, um, 14 feet tall. And that's the average range. When it comes to age, your adventuring decapodian should be at least older than 15. That's it. Oh, how old do they get? Uh, yes. It wouldn't fit the adventure, but imagine starting a level 1 campaign with a 30 foot tall 400 year old lobster wizard who has like, <laughs> like 4 hit points. Okay, the last thing that I want to mention about these guys is that they can run away backwards. That's a real lobster thing and it's pretty neat. On to the Manti. I know that sounds like a D-list Marvel villain who's a priest by day and a mantis by night, and you're right, because I didn't pick the name. But these guys immediately pose a role-playing challenge to whoever picks them, and for the first time in a while, it's not because they can't talk or because they're racist. It's that they always come in pairs. Meet the Manti Basher. Now meet the Manti Striker. Now have a lesson in Mantis Shrimp. Or S tomato pods. These little coral dwellers, who are absolutely not space aliens with too many superpowers, get naturally divided into two groups. The smashers, who have a club that they use to just beat the fuck out of fish, and the spearfishers who stab and barb their prey. They normally live in distinct environments, but the unifying magical presence of Old Shell, the giant normal lobster, they work in pairs. So essentially one of them can do you like Caesar and the other can do you like Kakyoin. Or they could both do you like different Caesars. I think the main reason Chitoni has stayed so isolated for so long is because visitors probably get bodied by Tweedledee and Tweedledum who have perfect bot lane synergy. But we're not just gonna bully a second player into playing the same race. If the buddy system is broken or the classroom size is an odd number, a lone roaming Manti will try and synergize quickly with a strong looking party member. Oh, they also average like five foot five inches, so they could square up with some tritons and it would probably look pretty funny. They get some neat features like trinocular dark vision and superheated punches. I forgot exactly how that one works. It's really hard to balance challenge rating five monster stats with player race abilities. 
So if you want to play a Decapodian, ranging from the pipe-smoking lobsters to fist-pumping brutes, too bad. The book's not out yet, dum-dum. That, that's basically Decapodians. I couldn't fit in a joke about it, but Zoidberg's a Decapodian. Like, exactly a Decapodian. They even have a war history. Okay, bye.